a former drug dealer, a juvenile offender, and a convict with an opioid addiction all have one thing in common. They are learning how to cook. And that's thanks to a very humble chef dedicated to giving people second chances. Take a look. How y'all doing? Good afternoon, morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Daquan Sistrunk, alias Zawan Nimrod, 252375. Chef Dink, 375, I take that with me. You know, as a little slight reminder how easy it is to get in trouble when you make the wrong choices. You know, I made a choice to get to where I was at. I made a choice to get through where I was at, and I made a choice not to go back. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Man, if I wouldn't have went to prison, I wouldn't have met Chef Hill, and I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And that's a clip from the documentary film Cold Water Kitchen, which premiered this week at the Doc NYC Festival. And this morning, we are joined by Chef Jimmy Lee Hill and one of his former students, Daquan Ardell, Sistrunk, as he calls himself, Chef Dink. So good morning, gentlemen. Thank you both for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Uh, Thank you for Powerful, having me. powerful documentary. And Chef Jimmy Lee, let me begin with you here because this is not just a cooking class. This is a culinary training program, right, that you have spent more than 30 years involved in driving, as they start the documentary, yeah. very long way to get there. Why did you decide to do it and keep going for so long? Food has just been my life. Uh, and I mean, even though it's a 67 mile drive one way, it's not that bad. It's a, it's a straight shot. So mm -hmm. I continue to go because I think that, well, I think that's where I'm supposed to be at. <clears throat> you know, um, that that's my calling, at least for right now. Uh, and so, and I love my job. Yeah. So I think that makes it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching it was very moving uh, to see everyone listening to your stories and what you, your stories that you have to tell. Daquan, can you talk about the first time that you met Chef here and first, what impression he made on you? It was immediate because I had heard about the program. I didn't know how to get to the program. I was actually working in the child hall at the, at the prison. So he comes through the back door, and when I seen him, I'm like, who was that? They like, that's Chef Hill from the food tech. I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta get with him. Mm -hmm. And that was the first impression. This and, is uh, Coldwater, Michigan, by the way. That's where this is taking place. And you know, da Daquan, we, t we hear you say in that clip that you made some choices that landed you in, in prison. So if you're willing to share, what were those choices? And then why, when, when you were there, did you decide to get involved in the culinary program? Well, the choices that I made were I sold drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a drug dealer. So I made the choices to sell drugs. I thought to help my family, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was hurting so many other families. It landed me into prison. Once I got to prison, I heard about the calling aid program, food tech. Yeah. I come from, you know, southern background. My grandmother and my mother, they taught me how to cook, but I didn't know the culinary arts of it. Excellent. All right. Well, Chef, how do you decide who is a part of the program? Who can yeah. who can join and be a part of this great and really impacts their lives so so much? Well, they they basically they send them to us uh, from different facilities. Okay. Uh, there used to be a waiting list, but now it's all done through uh, central office where mm -hmm. they uh, find out who has different uh, wants and trades and, and they send them to those prospective uh, facilities. Right. So I don't see them now until, until they get to me, okay. whereas I used to be able to just look at a list and call them over and then ask them, you know, why they want to be in the class yeah. and all that. Now they just come from other places, and so then they belong to me. And what is your hope, you know, at the end of the program, right? Um, you know, I, I once covered something here at Rikers Island. It was very similar where, where folks were learning to cook with the hope of getting a certificate that would then get them a job once they were released back into society. Is that what your hope is, that they move on to the culinary world outside of the prison? Yes, sir. That is my, uh, I think my job is to get them prepared uh, for uh, the culinary industry. And so that's why we do a lot of the things that we do in terms of the different foods and, and bring the chefs in to, to talk to them about what chefs look for when they are uh, interviewing. Yeah. And so I just try to get them ready that way. Yeah. I see. Daquan, where are you now? And how much has this program changed your life? Programs changed my life tremendously because, like I said, I, I understood how to do things in a different way from far as just plating, like uh, plate presentation. 
you know, I come from a southern background, so we just used to pile food on yeah. the plate. It's good food, we just <laughs> pile it on the plate. But Chef taught me the structure, and the food yeah. tech program taught me the structure and the readiness. It's, it's kind of more than food because you have to do a lot of book work. Mm -hmm. And me getting those certifications really is like what y'all said something like earlier, a couple few minutes ago, about the certifications we get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was well prepared when I got home. And That's right great. now, I own a restaurant. It's called the Green Mile Grill. Amazing. Wow. It's on the east side of Detroit. And I have a food truck as well. That's it's amazing. Family owned, family ran. That's amazing. So Fancy. when you see success stories like that, Chef. It's all you. I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, uh, I have no idea how I got to this point. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled to no end. Uh, I'm glad that they they bought what I was selling. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and in the documentary, there's a powerful moment where they say, you know, I, I think it was Brad or May who said, who may have said it, one of the one of the um, uh, culinary students who said, you know, you can't retire, you can't retire hmm. because you are the program, and you even said yourself, you don't know what would come after you. So, what's your plan? You know, <laughs> everybody thinks that they want my job. Uh, you know, they think that all we do is put food on a plate. Mm. And it's far more than that. But, you know, I'm sure there, there there's a light down there somewhere mm -hmm. near that tunnel. Yeah. Uh, but I just haven't seen it yet. Mm. So wow. I'm going to continue on until... You know, I, I think it's time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you have the recipe for a great future for all of these folks. Yeah. Such Thank great you work. You're a godsend. You really yeah. are. Well, I, I hear Amen. that a lot, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's very humble. Uh, You're very humble. Well, thanks for coming in, both of you. We really appreciate it. No, yeah. thank y'all for having yes, us. Yes, thank and, you for having me. Of course. Best it was a pleasure. of luck. Yeah, best of luck to both of you. And you can purchase tickets to Stream Cold Water Kitchen right from the comfort of your own home. <laughs> Just head to the website on your screen, docnyc.net film Cold Water Kitchen. We'll make sure that link is also available on our website, pix11.com. Yeah. So thanks again, Thank you, both. gentlemen. Yes, yes. Highly recommend, highly, highly recommend watching it. I've watched half of it, have to watch the rest of it, but so far, so it, it, it's powerful. You it want to really watch it. Is. Yeah.